All right. Good evening, everybody. Am I uh, am I audible? Do you need me to turn up or anything? I see a couple of you in the chat. Can you hear me? Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, well, uh, thank you guys so much for, for being here. Um, I really am bad at these impromptu, uh, live streams, but they, I think they're the most efficient way to, uh, to give you guys, um, some updates and some rundowns on, uh, a couple things. So, um, first of all, before I, before I dive in, um, again, sincerely, thank you so much for, for being here. Um, you didn't, uh, have to spend a Tuesday evening with me and it, uh, it's, it's greatly appreciated. So thank you so much. Um, I'm going to give you guys, um, uh, some bad news, some good news, some information about, uh, the band and other things that may be of interest. And, um, I've got a question or two for you all, and then um, I'll stick around. If, if you have anything you, you want to ask me, I'll, I'll certainly be um, available for that. So um, I'm going to start with the, with the bad news. Uh, earlier this year, actually, when I had the last live stream, the big plan was... Um, get the get the records done and we were setting up a, a few week tour for uh, the summer and if uh if y'all don't mind I'll, I'll explain what happened by way of a story um so on my birthday which is uh january 16th i had uh i didn't celebrate i don't really like live near any friends or anything like that so um i didn't do anything i just worked on the record and i was finishing a song called acceptance overture which is the finale of don't go the album about grief that i wrote for my uh, father and um for any of you music nerds i was hitting an, an a4 uh over and over and over and over and over again um for one of these it's this four-part harmony and this top one just kind of rides this a for a long time and i was able to get it and that was recovering from uh illness and other things like that and i was able to to get it and was real happy with it and very pleased with with the way it sounded and uh you know sent it to james and um some of the others, they were like, man, it sounds really good and all this stuff. And that night I went to uh, practice with uh, my other band, Solaris. And it was probably not a good idea because Solaris also has a lot of notes that are way up at the top of the register for me. And um, we were rehearsing and I eventually you know, went for this note and hit it. And then my voice went <laughs> and kind of cracked on it. And it was pretty painful. Um and, you know, I immediately said, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm toast. Uh, you know, I sang all weekend into the week, into this rehearsal. And um, not long after that, about 24, 48 hours later, I started getting this choking sensation, like somebody was grabbing my um, Adam's apple at all times. So it felt like somebody was squeezing me with a claw. And it was 24 hours a day. Did not stop, did not go away, no matter what. And, um, that sensation has, has not really stopped since January the, uh, the 17th, 18th. Um, I'm feeling it right now. In fact, it, um, I've been to, uh, uh, some doctors, specialists. Um, I've had my throat scoped. If you don't know what that process is like you take a, uh, it's a small camera attached to this long tube that they jam in your nose 
that they proceed by saying you'll feel a slight bit of pressure, which is a uh, gentle way of saying you're going to feel like your face is being pulled apart. And um, it uh, went back and it goes down into your throat. And then the doctor will tell you to uh, speak, clear your throat, say things, all this kind of stuff, make go falsetto, like ee, stuff like that. And uh, the guy was very nice. And this was at a cancer hospital because the, the fear was there was um, some, you know, odd looking things in my throat. And so this scan was happening everywhere I looked. It was, you know, oncology, um, cancer center, cancer, this cancer, that. And I was just sitting in the waiting room thinking, Jesus Christ, this is, this is it. I'm going to find out I have throat cancer or something like that. Um, and I was trying to psychologically prepare myself for what, what that entailed. And, um, dog was very friendly and he rolled the, he said, Oh, I, I work with singers sometimes. Uh, you know, a lot of them like to look at, uh, their throat as they're getting scoped. So he brings the, the monitor over to me as a, uh, and I've got a awful gag reflex. So I'm sitting there with this thing in my throat and I'm just, yeah, 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 yeah no, it's all good. And I'm just like, don't throw up on this guy, you know? Um, and, uh, he, he told me it was going to be 30 seconds. It was three minutes. And I know that because there was a clock behind him that I just stared at and focused on to try to not throw up. Um, but I did get to watch my throat and my larynx and all that stuff. And um, he gave me this mixed good and bad news, um, which was um, he he said, well, the, the thing the other doctor said is, I can't remember what the term is, but it's, it's basically just benign. It's just a, a thing. It's not hurting anything, not causing any problems. And he said, your larynx actually looks pretty good. Um, you know, I can tell you sing a lot. I can tell you to take care of it, uh, which was surprising to me considering how much I've yelled and screamed over the years. Um, and, you know, he said, I don't see any signs of cancer or anything like that. Um, so that was the good news. And he pulled it out and kind of looked at me and he said, you know, when I tell people that they don't have cancer, they're usually a little bit more excited. Um, and I said, yeah, but I still don't have an answer. And I didn't see this guy till um, February. And so it had been weeks at that point. And I said, I still don't understand why this is happening. And he said, well, unfortunately, there's not a physical reason why this should be happening. Uh, I can't see anything. And we talked about things. Like, oh, you know, anxiety can cause. I said, dude, I, if, if we're going to get into mental illness stuff like you, you, I know we just met but you need to understand like I know that stuff really well and I know about anxiety depression this and the other thing I know about the psychosomatic effects this isn't that um and he actually said yeah I don't think so either um so what they kind of theorize now is that there's some sort of nerve problem in my neck or spine that is sending some sort of signal to my throat. Uh, so it's April now. I'm, I'm coming up on three months of uh, choking sensation. I've learned to live with it, um, but it is, it certainly threw a wrench into plans. Um, I, at the same time in February, I had... Uh, gotten um, radial tunnel syndrome in my right arm and uh, then I had an injury to my left that was it felt like lightning bolts shooting all the way to my fingertips um, and then I took a fall and then I screwed up my left knee so I got pretty banged up uh, pretty badly and um, what they kind of said is that there's there's between the throat thing and my arm, they think there's something wrong in my spine. And the, uh, they think that's all, it's, it's all connected somehow. And so I've been to, um, between January and now, 
I've been to six different doctors and specialists, um, and I've been scoped and prodded and stuck and, you know, fluids drawn and interviewed and scanned and x-rayed and all sorts of stuff. And um, I don't have a ton of answers, and it's really frustrating. And I, uh, it, it was kind of a capper to me having a, a let's let's I'll be generous and call it an episode um, several things kind of all hit me at one time um, losing my ability to uh, potentially play with my left hand because what was happening is that it was um, it was painful to play and um, that was concerning me um you know drums is my is my first love and my first home guitar is something i i pretend like i know what i'm doing on and um so that that was a scary thing to kind of have to just grip my teeth and just push through pain um i was in the middle of finishing the record i was i was one and a third song away from being done with the records, like sending them to Jamie King and both records finished. Um, and everything had to be put on hold. And I had to stare down the barrel of, can I sing anymore? And I, you know, <laughs> Jesus, man, like the reticent is like my baby, my, my, my whole world. And I, um, you know, had just kind of gotten started with another band that were counting on me to to do vocals for the record. Luckily, they're retracking some stuff, so I don't I don't, I don't think they hate me as much as I fear yet. Um, I haven't been fired yet, um, but you know, knock on wood. And I had several friends that asked me if I would be involved with different you know side project things, um, and I was real excited because I was like, man, there's a lot of you know, a lot of people want me to, to sing with them, but, uh, you know, it, it, uh, it just wasn't in the cards for me at, at the present. So, uh, that was really bumming me out. Um, the anniversary of my father's death happened at the same time. Uh, I've had some negative stuff with, uh, with, with the, my divorce that has still been dragging out, which has been an expensive and, uh, emotional thing to go through. And, um, there's, there's just a lot, uh, there was just a lot going on and it was kind of capped off for me when, um, I had a conversation with my mom and she kind of like temporarily like forgot who I was. And that, was kind of it was like a straw that just broke my back and i uh no kidding just kind of vanished i i just uh i'd had i'd had about everything i could take because i'd had you know lost my money through this stuff you know ability to trust people uh you know my my body was in pain and not able to express itself musically my voice was gone um, and facing the prospect prospect of having to watch my mother go go through something like what I documented on the Oubliette was just not something I, 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 I'm not prepared for. And, um, my mind kind of took me like a crocodile and just did a death roll and pulled me down. And I didn't speak to anybody for, I guess a month, two months, um, my family ended up doing a, uh, wellness check on me. So I had the, the police show up to see if I was alive. Uh, the only thing I did was I went to, to work and I didn't even always go. Um, but I mustered up all my energy and all my goodwill for my students and, um, you know, gave them everything I had, and then I would just be depleted by the end of the day. Um, I didn't talk to bandmates. I didn't talk to family. I didn't talk to anybody. And 
um, I, I had come to find out I'd, I'd sort of abandoned social media at the same time. And I had, uh, my phone was screwed up at the same time. I, um, saw eventually that a bunch of people were trying to find me and no one knew where I was. So it was a, uh, it was a, a, you know, a dark pause for me. Um, and my kids are what brought me out of it. Um, helping them, making them excited about music, inspiring them to make music, um, gave me hope again. So I got, uh, with my throat doctor and the, the vocal coach and, and start doing things to try to heal up and other things. And, um, I'm at the point where I can sing again. Um, not quite as, as long. So I'm, I'm having to like build my stamina up and just trying to kind of get used to this, this choking feeling. That's just, I guess that's just how it's going to be the rest of my life. Um, unless we can figure out what's up with my spine. So, um, what this all means is, um, we're gonna, we're gonna cancel our, our tour for this, this summer, just because I, I don't know that it's a good idea for us to go out for, you know, two weeks or however long. If I'm not entirely like, you know, in, in shape. Um, I don't want to, I don't want to disappoint any of you that would come. I don't want to burn any bridges with venues, uh, make them angry. And I don't want to, if, if my voice and my spine can be saved, I don't want them to be permanently damaged. So, um, we're gonna, we're gonna cancel that, but we are going to reschedule. So, that's the that's kind of the bad news is album got pushed uh both of them and uh tour for this year we're just gonna we're just gonna pull out um and i'm i'm lucky that the you know james and, and nick are very very supportive and understanding they in fact think it's the best move they, they want me to be okay um so what we're going to do is um, we are we are going to uh, go out next year. We're actually going to go about a, a year from now, about last week of March, first week of April. We're going to go out um, and we're going to kind of head south this time. So we'll go down through Florida out. Um, I'd like to see if we can get out to Texas um, and then come back. And um, then in the summer, we'll go the opposite way and we'll go north and then back out west and come back around um i don't know yet um what we'll do about it who we'll be with um or anything uh you know my buddies in in uh, voroth have repeatedly talked about like setting up a, a tour together um and they're getting ready to go on the road with gorgatron and casket robbery i think um so we might kind of team up with them. Um, it may be like, you know, almost all of us in, in the rest and have multiple bands. It may be, you know, one of those things. And, um, you know, who knows? Who knows what will happen? Um, but I think I think the smart play is just to, to try to heal up and, and not try to do that much performance and the, if, if, if any of you guys have ever seen this before you know I, I try to put everything i have into our our shows um so that it's a it's a satisfying thing and it's it's uh you know um an, a, an expressive thing but uh it is it is hard on me it's hard on my voice um to do that if, if you guys saw us on tour last year um I think by like the third day I was already pretty toasted. And I think when we played Chicago, when we played Chicago. I, uh, I didn't even have a voice. So we did an instrumental show. Um, I remember the sound guy I thought it was just the, the, the greatest thing. We put our screen in front of us. We didn't, so you didn't watch us. Our screen was in front. You couldn't see us. We were just playing. It was, it was a cool gig. Um, 
all things considered. Um, but I couldn't, uh, a friend of mine came to see me and I had to communicate through like gestures and like typing something on my phone and holding it up. Um, and so if that happened, you know, last time, if I'm injured this time, I, you know, I want to try to be smart about it and listen to my vocal coach, um, who's helping me kind of strengthen it back up. So the good news is, you know, both specialists I saw said, you know, you're going to sing again. It's all going to be, it's all going to be good. You'll, you'll kind of get that back. Um, so, and, uh, I have, so other good news is I'm, I'm finishing the, the records. Um, I've actually completed all the, uh, the main cleans and the harshes. Um, and, uh, I need to redo something, uh, that just wasn't up to, up to, up to snuff. But, um, I think, you know, once I, once I get that done, it's going to be really nice. Um, people I've shown the material to, uh, have, you know, said it's really intense. Um, my buddy, Brian Kingsland, who played, uh, played in a band called Nile. Um, some of you guys may know, um, and he has a, he has a, um, uh, project called Imperishable, really good death metal. Um. I let him hear a couple of songs. He, he said he thinks it's the best best material of you know that that this thing has ever released. Um, James is actually recording his uh, his um, solo for the finale, the grand finale, Acceptance Overture, which uh, is my favorite solo he's he's done. And you know he's an incredible guitar player, so um, I think he outdid himself compositionally this time with with that as well as a, a really quiet solo on a, on a, a song called the riptide that um, was just an improv. Uh, I, sh I showed him the song at like after recording and I, I just said, Hey, play something over this. And he just, he kind of improvised something. And I, I wanted it to have that sort of feel, you know, and he, he just did a phenomenal job. Um, and uh, I got to have some of my students on this record as I did with the, Last one, um, the wind ensemble that you heard in uh, the nightmare and stage seven. Those were my students. I was getting to conduct. That was the last year I was actually a, a band director, and um, I've since become an orchestra director. So there are going to be some strings on um, on these uh, new records, which is going to be very exciting. Um, just because it's a new texture we haven't used a lot before, and uh, you know the youngest player on there is 14 the oldest one is 18 um and they each of the string players just did amazing um got a fabulous violin player i wish i had i wish i had written him some more uh difficult stuff but maybe you know next next record we're gonna stay in touch um uh my dear friend lita is a opera singer she she sang on um one of the tracks uh on the grief album and just did a did a wonderful job um and uh you know so so it's really coming together and my uh my buddy uh dr nick kinney um who's uh he's the chair of the music department at uh southeast missouri university me and him go way 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 back he is the guy who played uh french horn on on the eve of a goodbye so if you if any of you have heard uh, funeral for a firefly and the amazing grace that's at the end um that was nick kinney and so i brought him back for uh for this record to do some 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 things um and uh i think i think you're gonna you're gonna like what he what i've uh written for him what he's playing it's it's uh it's pretty it's pretty nice um and so um also got some got some um put together some some sort of more experimental things for to to help help you kind of get drawn into where we are um and the both of these records please and don't go they're they're not a kind of chronological narrative like um Eve and Oubliette, and I hope that will not be a disappointment, but they're, they're exploring some, some things, you know, um, it's, 
you know, please is just about all the, all the disorders I've gone through. And, you know, kind of coincidentally, I was able to finish it when even more things are going wrong for me. So, you know, I think you'll hear some pretty genuine desperation, uh, in my voice in a lot of places. Um, and obviously the grief album is just about the different aspects of grieving. Um, and, uh, you know, I see in the chat, yes, uh, as, as Ken has figured out, the two albums combined say, please don't go. Um, so that's the, that's the idea. Um, so it's, it's a really, you know, personal thing. And I, I really hope it will not be disappointing for any of you. Um, I want to believe that like, my buddy Brian is is right, and this is the best recent material we've ever done. I'm just not the guy who's going to come out here and be like, "Oh, you guys aren't ready. You don't even know what we got coming for you." Like, I'm just that's just not me. Um, and you know, that's that's what it is. So, what's left, um, Jamie? Right now. Uh, last I talked to Jamie, the plan is to kind of get the mix going this summer, maybe June. Um, I'm going to, I'm actually, when I get done with this, if you know, my voice is kind of shaky right now, but I'm going to see if I can't retract that, that one song I'm just not happy with. Um, so I'm going to go immediately to my booth and, and try to try to get it. Um, if I can, I know that, uh, James is tracking his lead, his final lead. Um, I think it may be this week. And, um, pretty soon, uh, the stuff from Dr. Kenny is going to be coming in as well. So then it's on to mixing and mastering. And, um, that probably will take a little while because I'm very particular. James is very particular. Um, and I want this to have a very, very specific, um, feel, I, you know, I want you to feel what I feel, you know, um, and I, I hope it will be an exciting journey for you and, and fulfilling. And I hope it will hurt. And I, I don't mean that in the negative way, of course, but um, this has been, these two records are documenting, I, I think, what could fairly be called the worst time of my life. Um, the physical maladies, the, the, the divorce, death of my father, death of my boss, death of friends, uh, just, just a, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of stuff at one time. And, um, so I think, I think that, that if you, if you like what, what we've done before, I think you'll, you'll, uh, you'll connect with it. I hope, um, and I hope that like, if you have disorders like I have, if you've been through things like I have, if you've lost somebody and you feel this uh, just wellspring of conflicting, but volcanic emotions fighting each other, I hope that maybe I can give you an outlet or somewhere to take that, you know? Um, so I apologize. I, I keep forgetting to check all the, stuff you guys are saying so please um forgive me on that uh let me see am i familiar with liturgy as in hill hunt hendrix be legendary group of men. i would love that johanan um i think that we're too obscure <laughs> i don't think anybody knows who we are i well i take that back paul from paul from cynic knows who we are um and he's a sweet guy. And and um, the guy's an atheist. They, when we, we played with Cynic and Atheist last year, and they were just the sweetest people. Um, and I've actually kept in touch with Paul. We, we've uh, we've uh, called, texted a couple times. Um, just the most outstanding person. Just absolutely so. Uh, I think that's that's it. But if there's ever a chance we have the money to buy onto a Cynic tour, we will definitely do that. Uh, but I have no money right now. Um, so, uh, let's see, is he going to make me cry again? Like on fuel for a firefly? Um, maybe, um, when I showed the song despair, the, the young woman who sings on 
a song called Denial. I showed her despair. She welled up with tears when it was over, and she walked out of the room, went to the bathroom, closed the door to cry, um, which I guess depending on who you are, that's a good sign or a bad sign. Um, you know, whatever. Um, so there that is. Uh, let's see. Sorry, I'm trying to trying to catch up. We're going to see them before the end of the year. Man, I just don't know. I just, I can't, that, that depends on how fast the, the mixes get turned around. Um, but especially with, with don't go like this is honoring my father. I'm not releasing it till it's right. Um, and I mean, it's not like we're somebody, we don't have a label. We don't have anybody, you know, uh, like clamoring for it. So, um, you know, the meaning and, and, and the feeling have to be there. Uh, let's see. Metal injection might have. <laughs> that metal injection. Hey, yeah, we got, if, if you don't know, metal injection said we had the, the most heartbreaking set in the history of prog power. Um, so considering it's got like a 20 year, I guess, uh, pedigree, I mean, I'll take that. And, uh, and hell, we were the first thing of the first day. So. Hey, oh, the man himself, Brian King's on in the house. I feel like a solid disturbed cover puts on the map. Yeah, I was thinking maybe abandoning all this emotional stuff and I was just going to do a real, real functified down with the sickness thing. Um, and uh, and Brian Kingsland has already said, I, I don't mean to spoil it for us, but Brian has already um, agreed to to play guitar on all of our uh, disturbed cover albums. So. There you go. Um, let's see. Yeah, we'll probably have to do a Kickstarter. And Lita, I'm so, I apologize for calling you out. Sorry. Um, man, those are you guys are very, very kind to me and to everything we got, we do. So, will there be any acoustic songs like on the first album? Yes, actually, there is actually more than one, um, and part of that is calling back to stuff that was stuff that my parents used to love was when i was in werewolf and these these other black and death metal bands and i did a lot of acoustic kind of soft things um which everybody i know everybody says oh it's like opeth and everything my main the thing i was trying to do was i was trying to be steve von till from <laughs> from roses I, I I loved everything he did on his solo stuff, and he has such a grandfatherly voice that I don't have, so I can't sound like him. And I'm a little too noty and too uh, impatient to have those like super slow, expressive things. So like me trying to be like uh, Stephon Till ended up me being like Opeth uh, on those on those acoustic things. Oddly enough. Um, which is funny, but yeah. Um, so there'll be some songs that, uh, there, there's one on please. There's one on don't go. That's just guitar and vocals. Um, and, uh, I think, I think there'll be, I think there'll be, uh, you know, I think there'll be a good journey. Uh, at least I hope if I can, if I can get this stupid one, I screwed up, uh, cleaned up tonight. That'd be fabulous. Um, so yeah, we will definitely do some of that kind of stuff. Um, and, uh, I, re I appreciate everything you guys have said. I'm, I'm glad that you connect with, with the music, everybody, and that, you know, that you're, that you're resonating, um, with it. Um, so I have a question for all of you. Um, if, if you can, if you can, um, help me out uh, so we're going to try to raise raise some some funds and, and do some other things and we might do you know kickstarter things and all that and and you know like next year is like the fifth year anniversary of oubliette which is crazy to me so i want us to do something special for that yes i'm trying to do the vinyl thing it's super expensive i'm sorry if we had more support from a label that would like front us the money, because that's the part that's just tough is that all that money you got to pay up front to get the pressing. 
Um, and there are companies that'll do it like by like you can order it. Um, like it's on demand printing, but I don't know, man, that just feels like it's ripping you off with how expensive it is. But I don't know much about the vinyl stuff. I, I don't, I don't collect it, but, uh, James does. So he would know all everything about that. Um, so I, I definitely want to do something for that as well. Um, and the year after that would be the 10 year anniversary for Eve. Um, so I feel like we should do something for, for, for that. Um, but I don't yet know if both of these albums are going to come out at the same time. If we're going to do one, then the other, um, uh, we may, we may shop it around to see if there's any support, any, any label that wants to kind of throw in and help us out. Um, maybe, maybe not, but, uh, if, if, um, if not, we may just do like a big double album release or something like that. I just, I don't know. Um, they're two separate things that are written at two different frames of mind, but they're part of one entity to me. So we'll, we'll see. Um, so what will, what we're going to try to do is to try to, you know, do everything that we can. Um, playing shows would be great, but we'll try to try to raise some funds and other stuff like that. So, the question I have for you is, would you, is there anything that I could do or we could do um, or that you'd like, like some, like a specific type of merchandise or some kind of thing that, um, you know, you feel would be worth your time, dollar, whatever, as we try to raise money to, to get these, both of these out, um, we're running low on a lot of stuff. In fact, there's going to be a flash sale on our logo shirts at the end of this week. Um, we're going to sell them dirt cheap, uh, but I'm kind of going to just try to clean us out. Um, so we're going to get, you know, just, I may just put like all of our, all of our shirts, like everything we've got just on some super reduced thing. Um, and uh, just try to see if we can clean, clean house. Um, but I want to get you guys, you know, stuff that you might want. So would you be, would you like hoodies? Would you like new shirt designs? Would you like some sort of poster? Uh, would you like, uh, I don't know. Um, but that's my first question is like, is there, is there anything you would, you would like that would be something we, we can get that, that you would like? Hoodies, hoodies, hoodies. I hear you. Um, let's see. Band patch. So, you know what's funny about patches? I had never thought of that. I have a student who has a bunch of patches on his pants, and he showed me one day he made a reticent patch for himself. He, like, drew the logo. It was so convincing. It looked like it was printed, but he drew it with, like, whiteout or something. It was very, very impressive. Um, so I didn't even think about patches, but, yeah, we can... I, I, we'll have to look into that, but, um, yeah, shirts and albums, beanies, maybe patches would be cool. T-shirts with something on the front and back tour shirts. Well, yeah, when we do, we, we will do tour shirts for, for next year's run for the, for the spring one, especially. And we'll, um, I've actually talked to, um, the, the, the girl who's helping to, um, book everything. Um, she's gonna, she's gonna kind of manage all that for us. Um, but, uh, we've already talked about like designs for the tour poster and the shirt and all that stuff. And so we'll have, you know, the, the, the logo and the image and the tour stuff. And then on the back, we'll have all the dates and all that kind of stuff. Um, so we'll, we'll do that upright, especially since we've, we've got enough time to plan. Um, I've never thought about beanies. So yeah, um, we could, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly down. Um, do we have a Patreon? So I've had been asked about the Patreon thing before. Um, I get extremely busy between, I actually, I actually worked two jobs teaching at two different schools. Um, I, uh, 
I did do some some private lessons outside of that as well, but uh, that has stopped. But obviously, I mean, I've got multiple bands and other things, and I just I try to stay busy. So my only concern with Patreon is I would I, I wouldn't I don't know I, I wouldn't want to I wouldn't know what to give you. Um, like if I did a Patreon thing, like help me out, like what what do you what would you want? Um, you know, I can't like give you the records because I want you to experience them as a record. Um, I mean, I, maybe I can like play some stuff for you or I could talk you through some stuff or after the record's out, I could do like a, a behind the scenes thing or like a dive, like pull up the, the, the session and like talk about stuff or something. Maybe I, I, I again, I just, I don't, I don't know what, what, uh, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not very fascinating, so I just, I don't imagine people want to hear me talk, um, and I can get James to play, he's good, <laughs> so, um, but, let's see, um, Patreon help, yes. so, I, I have no doubt, I think I even heard about that with, with Patreon helping them out, but that, that, that see they got they got a much bigger reach than than we do and i'm so bad at all this promotion shit i, I don't i don't know how to how to like get everybody you know <laughs> to be aware of us i'm just i'm just bad at bad at that kind of thing um let's see uh fanny pack i mean if you guys want fanny packs i'll do fanny packs man i want to do europe i really do i really 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 do um in the worst way because i feel like we have even more fans there like we we get streamed more there than almost anywhere else um so i would love to come to europe i'd love to come to uk um it's just it's just a money thing uh for us like if we could if we if there was like a way for, we, for us to like get on a festival or like if prog power europe would would have us like you know if, if they got a bunch of people go and say, you need to put the reticent on there. Cause I already played America. We, you know, that would at least give us justification to try to maybe see if we can hook up with a band or, or something. Um, that's, that's something I, I, I want to talk to, to our, our little, um, booking agent manager person to see, but I'm going to try. I really am. We all want to a hundred percent. Um, I would love to come there. I just, I don't have, I know some people in the UK. I know some people in like Norway and Germany um, who've all asked us to come there. I just, this, it's such a big undertaking. I don't, just honestly, I don't even know where to start. So maybe some of them could help us. Maybe some of them would, would you know, like between all their efforts, we could be like the fucking Captain Planet with our powers combined and we can figure it out. Um, you know, the, the, the spirit is, is willing. And so is the flesh. It's just the, the, the wallet, I guess. Um, so let me see. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, working well for silent planet. Yeah. I've heard, I've heard a lot of people doing the Patreon thing. Like I said, and this is something like what I'm asking you guys is just what, if you tell me like what you want, like if it's something I can actually do on the regular that, that y'all would be into, um, you know, I'd be fine. I'm a teacher. Maybe like I can give you like lessons on something, uh, <laughs> or I can give you my, you know, some of my courses on like production and, and music history and stuff like that. Uh, maybe that's what, that's what our Patreon could be is, is, uh, music class with Mr. Hathcock. I don't know if people would be into that. Maybe, probably not. Um, See more live sessions. Yeah, I get it. Um, I appreciate that, Nicholas. Just just people supporting. I just I don't I don't want you guys to feel like you're just giving me money. I'm I'm just not I'm not that type of person. Um, and thank you, Paul, for for uh, helping out. I, I if I remember your name correctly, I believe we talked. I think we did an interview. Um, for like power play or something unless uh, if i'm for if i'm confusing with someone else i apologize um 
but it is good to hear from you uh, if that is if that is you. Um, and I'd love any help if you got anything. Uh, don't know if there needs to be a thing. Let's see. Sorry, I'm trying to read as fast as I can. I apologize. Let's see. Um, it's behind the scenes, behind the scenes stuff. Um, so with behind the scenes stuff, like, do you would you be interested in like what the process is or how I recorded all this stuff? Because like this album, with the exception of the drums, was all recorded in this room. Um, or like, where did I come up with the, with the, with the, um, concepts or I, I don't know. I mean, I'm happy. I'll talk your ear off about all that stuff. Um, for sure. I just don't want to, you know, bore you, I guess. Um, I have a propensity for being long winded. Um, but you know, if 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 y'all be into that, see this this is this is why I need help with this kind of thing. Because if I say Patreon, I think of like YouTubers. So it's just sort of God. I I don't know. Uh, let's see. Maybe Radar Fest. I I don't know anything about Radar Fest. So if someone can send me something, that'd be great. Uh, let's see. Um, like Patreon. Okay. Well, I'll, I'm going to look into this Patreon thing. Um, y'all are y'all are convincing me. Who shot first, Han or Greedo? Han shot first. That's that's obvious. Maybe like casual horror movies. Oh, baby, man, I would. I'm all about that. Like, if you want to know what I think about some horror movies, I will do that. I gave, <laughs> I gave Lita like a 50 minute horror review, like in Messenger <laughs> the other day. I saw this movie. I had, I had to tell somebody, so I pick up my phone and I just say, "All right, listen, I'm gonna have to vent." And I just ranted about this movie. Uh, she said it was quite entertaining. So if you want rants about movies, I can do that shit. Um, no problem. Uh, let's see. Uh, just, I see these message retracted things. I hope, I don't I don't know what they say. I don't, I don't know if it's like, you suck or something like that. Um, or if I said something wrong. Stand-up comedy with Chris. I don't know that I'm funny enough for that. Sheet stories. I do... Um, I do uh, have a book coming out. It is actually being edited uh, right now. I've actually got the first edit back. Um, I'm writing the forward and everything. So I am I am releasing that book this year. Um, should be in the next couple months. Um, so it is just a collection of funny stories um, of my travels and everything like that. So if you're, you know, there is that. There is that. So um, I don't know. I could, I could, uh, Maybe I can read you stories. Story time. How about that? Um, let's see. Process is cool. I recorded it. The tabs for the instrument. Man, see, like, no spoons doing tabs. And just watching them do it, like, makes my, like, makes me twitch. Because I've I've written, like, I write sheet music. That's what I wrote for all, all the winds you've ever heard, the the French horns, the the strings, like all that stuff. I write out the music like on a score. Um, it does take a while and tabs frustrate me more than that. Um, cause I don't write in tabs because I, I, I'm, I'm too classical. I'm too classically trained. So I think in like a five line staff, you know, treble clef, bass clef kind of thing. Um, I know there's things where you can write that and it'll do the tabs for you. I know that, but it's, uh, just one of those things. Um, let's see. Um, yeah. yeah, I can I can do how it's created, process stuff. It'd be cool. We didn't do an interview. I do a show called The Dark Side of Metal. Yeah, let's see, including a special. Oh, The Dark Side of Metal. I remember that now. God, I could swear there was somebody I talked to that was named Paul Henderson. Um, well, I apologize for confusing you, but. Yeah, yeah, I remember that now. Yeah, Dark Side of Metal, yeah. Um, it feels like you have a fandom of music nerds that would be mega into it. Okay, well. Um, the book is coming out. Did I like the movie Men? The movie, <laughs> I did like the movie Men. It was a little slow. It That took a while to get going. But my goodness, there were things in there I've never seen. And that ending... The um, I don't want to spoil it for Bill. That birthing stuff, 
was wild. That was wild. Um, so I recommend it. It's 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 something else, but you got to be patient. But yeah. Um, when I talk about games, uh, I will talk your head off about Final Fantasy games or turn-based RPGs. I am all about them. I will nerd out over that stuff because I've been into that stuff for 30 years. Um, so, you know, little known fact about me, I absolutely adore. If you, if I just see it, that a game says turn-based RPG, I don't even read the rest. I'll be, okay, I'll take it. Even if it sucks. Like that is my favorite thing. That is my favorite kind. Um, other than that, I like the old school God of War games and like Dante's Inferno or Dynasty Warriors or anything where you are just doing like se like seas of enemies and you're just slashing through them all. I like that kind of stuff. Um, I don't like Dark Souls. Sorry, I'm sure a bunch of you do. James does and is all about that stuff. Uh, it's just I I tried, man. It's just not my thing. It just really is not my thing. Um, so, yeah, I can talk to you a lot about games, and I have all sorts of wild opinions about them and all sorts of stuff. So, yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, trying to keep up. Sorry, sorry. Purchasable sheet music. Um, well, I already have sheet music for all the wind parts and string parts. Um if people wanted that, I, that was actually something I was going to like raffle off is I broke a symbol and I had um, scores that I just signed uh, from when we recorded in studio. I actually have some scores from Eve. Actually, I have the scores from Eve. I have the scores from Oubliette. And I think the symbol I broke on Eve as well. I was always like, oh, I'll, I'll auction it off or something. Like that. And then I never could figure out how or what to do with it. So I just have like these things that you know i don't know if people <laughs> would want them um because god i've had that eve stuff for a long time just sitting in a box um so maybe i don't know maybe people would want keepsakes i don't know um nerd yes i know i didn't i never pretended i wasn't uh i've i've heard of sea of stars i haven't played it um if it's if it's recent, I haven't played. I'm too busy, and I I I always mean to. If you saw my game collection, you'd think, man, you must play a lot. Yeah, I, I, like 15 minutes a week. Like I, I wish. Um, like a dragon, if it was. Yeah, I played the first Like a Dragon. It was awesome. I was so excited about that return to form, and I love the Yakuza games. So that was a that was a lot of fun to combine those two things. Absolutely loved it. It was, and it was just that that wild Japanese humor and storytelling style that the Yakuza games have where it'll be super serious. And then just the most silly thing you've ever seen. And then back to serious. Um, it was really good. That was real entertaining. Uh, let's see. Yeah. I've, I've, I have Bloodborne. I haven't fired it up. Uh, is this my first YouTube live chat? This is my second, uh, which you can tell by how absolutely terrible I am at it. So, uh, yeah, there that is. Um, we'd love to have scores. Yeah, well, I I can certainly do that that stuff for you. Um, so that'd be that'd be awesome. Um, you know, I haven't I had not really before thought about all this stuff that you guys have said about the things like the Patreon and all those things. But maybe I don't know. I'll try that. I don't I don't know what what the pricing stuff is or what. I guess I should just look at what kind of low tier people like me would would do um isn't that like just a recurring thing like you you it's like a subscription thing or is it is it like uh every time somebody posts something you like pay for it or something like that i don't know um i don't know i don't know let's see um ask my students to help too uh depends on what you're talking about um if they're my current students um i can't involve them in anything where money is exchanging hands it's just very unethical cannot do that kind of thing um so like their participation with me is strictly voluntary i say does anybody want to play um that kind of thing so you know i cannot compel them or anything like that um 
and I leave it up to them. I'm I'm lucky that so many of them want to to do that stuff and and they don't completely hate my music. Um but like involving them in that stuff, it need to be like they have they have gone on and all that all that kind of stuff. Um but I do have former students that that come back around. In fact, the person that played tenor sax on um on Eve and on Oubliette, um Andrew Lovett, he was a student of mine. And he's now actually a uh, a band director with a master's degree and also so he's now teaching music and everything. Um I went to his wedding a couple a couple months ago, which that's that's insane to me because he was a teenager like five seconds ago, and now he's like an adult with a, two degrees and getting married, and that's just that's just crazy to see. But that's that's the good thing about teaching, man. You get to see these kids, um, you know, really become full fledged adults. It's 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 an amazing thing to see, um, and I'm I'm very fortunate. There's a bunch of kids like stay in touch with me. Um, or want to be, want to do things like this. And, um, you know, one of my kids has decided to compose. He was, he was uh, inspired to compose. So he's composed a little piece. Um, we're, we're, I'm going to program it for our, uh, spring concert for our orchestra. Um, and, uh, it's really good. Like it's, 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 uh, it's, it's, it's quite good. It's nice. Um, and, uh, you know, yeah, it's just, it's kind of, kind of crazy. Um, and you know, I've got in my production class, I got a bunch of kids who are like making their own music. Uh, one, one of them's getting ready to release an album in September. Um, and he's, uh, apprenticing at a studio. I got some other kids that have gone on to go pursue degrees in production. Um, a couple of them are actually already producing one, one student I had last year, he, he moved down to Florida. He, he emailed me, the other day it was just like, Hey, I started this, like, I don't know. It's like a death core band or something, but, uh, he said, what should I do? And what should I watch out for? Cause he was looking to get recorded and want to know what he, what, what should he be considering? And it's, it's just really cool. It's just really cool. Um, so yeah. Um, well, he has not given the album a name. I see that, you know, uh, you're asking for it. Uh, I'm going to be shouting him out when it when when he does it. Great. It's a uh, singer songwriter stuff. So it's very it's very, um, you know, it's acoustic guitar um, expressive. He's a big fan of like odd tunings and stuff like that. And it's uh, he's got a great voice. Um, you know, if you like if you like my old stuff, you'd like what he does. It's, it's really nice. Um, and he's and he's experimental as well. Like he does some kind of like noise things and MIDI stuff on top of it. It's uh it's really cool. Um and he's just a little sponge. He just takes everything that I'm that I'm giving him. Um so I don't know if he's I need to find out because he hasn't said it yet. Um what he's releasing it under if it's like his name or his if he's going under like an artist name and I and I don't know what the album is called yet because he hasn't decided. Um but I've heard the material uh and helped him just with some suggestions and other stuff like that. Um, and like, he's, he's going to be like somebody you'll be aware of if you, if you like that kind of stuff, just like indie um, singer songwriter stuff. Uh, he's going to, he's going to have a name at some point. Like he's, he's too good at that, that young age. Um, so yeah. Um, so when he gets his stuff together, like watch, like we'll, we'll, I don't know. What's the term? Share it, retweet it. Yeah, I'll retweet it on our Twitter that I haven't logged into in four years. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so yeah, but I mean, I got a bunch of kids that are that are that are like that, and it's just it's it's an amazing thing. It's probably the most important thing I do um, is work with them. So with the Patreon thing, I'll be honest, like that's the thing that appeals to me most is is maybe the opportunity to kind of talk about how we can use music, the utility of music, what you could do, all those kinds of things, like an opportunity to maybe teach or uh, try to inspire people in some way like that, that really appeals to me. Um, you know, but there, uh, sorry to get off on that rant. Uh, let's see. Still working on becoming the adult. Uh, we, we, we all are. Can I share the name of the album? There it is. It's your face light up when you talk about your students is priceless. Yeah. Well, I mean, I do love my kids. So, um, let me see. Pull back here. It's nice to know I'm not the only retro gamer. 
um, just want to say. So, um, cool, cool, cool. Make sure this teaching platform would be amazing. Yeah, I may, I may do that. That may be, I think that may be the, the most interesting thing we could do is, is just, uh, as an educational thing, um, just, um, maybe just a bunch of different stuff. Um, but I mean, I, I don't know that it'd make a bunch of money or anything like that, but, um, that might help us out to get some things. Cause we're going to have to, <laughs> we were talking about all the expenses. Um, and so for the tour next year, like we need to get a new trailer and other stuff. And we're just looking at all these totals and like, you know, we're gonna need a video and all this other stuff. Um, <laughs> it's just, it's so expensive and I don't know. Like the videos I, I, I think of for, for the new material is so freaking like abstract and weird. It, I don't know, man. It, it'd just be, it'd be hard to, hard to do. Um, but um, we are, I am going to do a, an extra song uh, on uh, one of the records. I, I decided I'm going to do uh, a cover uh won't tell you what it is yet but we're going to release that as a single so if the albums are taking a little bit longer we're going to release that um at some point maybe try to do some sort of little video for it or something like that um it's going to be unlike any of the other covers it'll be different um i'm willing to bet you would never guess the artist um i saw somebody say taylor swift earlier no um it's not an ironic artist it's an artist that i i enjoy um, but it's just uh, not one that we've touched, been compared to anything uh, in the past, which is, uh, I think, going to be cool. And uh, I'm going to do kind of my own thing with it. Um, so pending my voice, uh, recovering and everything. And, um, you know, we'll see here in a little bit if I can if I can knock out this, uh, you know, these last few songs. Um if if i can um then that'll be the next thing that i work on but otherwise we may just wait a little while um to do that and um we'll release that as a single and i think you know maybe like put it on the disc or something like that or do something special with it um i at one point thought about doing an album of covers because i actually had a few in mind and you know just calling it plagiarism or something like that um, but yeah, I wish I could do neurosis. I can't pull off neurosis. I wish I've tried. I've tried for years. Um, neurosis in it to, to me is like the top of the mountain. They just, they're, they're beyond my ability. Um, and it's not in the technical sense. It's just their, their expression, their understanding. Um, it's something I, I, I can only aspire to. I'm, I'm never going to reach that. Uh, we expecting any zero almost material? Uh, I doubt it. I doubt it. Um, after after I'm done with this stuff, I'm going to shift gears to um, the Solaris stuff, uh, unless they fire me. <laughs> um, and um, then I assume just move into recording for that stuff. And uh, I may do you know do start doing some shows with with them because I only have to sing, and they're kind of just getting their feet wet again. Uh, after a hiatus so they're doing like 30 minute sets and stuff. so it's, it's kind of you know like a show every, um, once a month every other month something like that for 30 minutes that's like kind of that'd be a good way to kind of get myself sort of warm back up and i don't have to hurt my hand um by playing anything so that'd be um i think that'd be good um so zeromus i would i would love to do i don't know that you know, Ryan, you may be the only person on earth that likes Zeromus. Um, <laughs> so, uh, that's something I do want to do, um, just for my own ed edifice because I intended to do that years ago, but I just never got around to it. So, oh man, nine inch nails, you know, hurt would not be the one I would do. I would never do hurt. Um, what would I do? I would, if I were going to do nine inch nails, I would do, I would do, um, what is that song called? Is it the ruiner or something like that? The, 
the me that you know is now made up of wires all that's all that stuff i can't remember what it's called but it's a great it's it's odd time signature kind of industrial and i love that i love that because it's not just the same droning beat the whole time like you know house music and everything but i love that i love that um yeah that would be that would be a good one um that may be something if let's see if any of you guys like are on my on my uh personal facebook thing you may have seen i've done some covers i've done i, I was going through doing every uh, the becoming thank you thank you i don't know why i was thinking like ruiner is like a different song but that's the same record maybe they're next to each other that's what i was thinking that but the becoming the becoming um yeah yeah um there's 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 a bunch of there's a bunch of songs that that uh you know we could do but um yeah i'm gonna do a new version man i would freaking love to redo i would love to redo the hymns for the dejected because that uh <laughs> it's hard for me to listen to hymns for the dejected because it makes me cringe um i was so young that was all recorded in my bedroom on a little taz cam but man um it was it was a it was a good learning experience for me but that album sounds so bad and you know i sang some things that were so bad and uh, even some of the songwriting was kind of eh. but i mean that's a stepping stone and that's something i know just from teaching is is you need those failures you need those kind of ah, that's not so good you you need those experiences nobody nobody wakes up and is just perfect you know um but there are songs on there that I actually really like like untitled um the letter um if i were blind um there's some of those that i like alone the first one on there I, I think are actually good songs for what they are um and I'd, it'd just be nice to hear those done like in a studio um i was originally at one point god I, i'd even talked to cliff about this whack when cliff was in the in the band um doing like four of the songs or maybe five of the songs off of uh hymns redoing them updating them whole nine yards and just calling the album the ep hymnal um i thought that would have been a, a nice little like nod um but yeah um you you folks that are that are heading out I, I appreciate you so absolutely thank you so much for for your for your time uh 100 percent. if you're if it's 2 a.m get some rest um this is once a day wow um yeah untitled is is untitled is fun to play and there's little things there's all sorts of little things i would i would do um <laughs> yeah the the 11 minute drum solo thing you know i did that is just because i was tired of like guitar gets all the glory and at the time i i had this i had this other thing called catharsis and it was going to be it, it was kind of what the reticent turned into um where i don't i never set out to make prog kind of music i didn't set out to make any any of this stuff i said i'm going to play what i want to play so that's why you can hear black metal and symphonic stuff and jazz and funk and you know rock and acoustic stuff and whatever else like i didn't i didn't want to and it's not, i know it sounds so fucking pretentious to do the i didn't want to be bounded by labels like okay but i i i was a part of scenes that were really um oh let me put this delicately they were very segmented they were very segmented um this is true this is real this is that and anything that's outside those lines is lame or some other horrible horrible thing um uh, and that's kind of the thing about it you know what i mean it's it's uh i just kind of wanted to not be a part of that um because when i played you know death metal death metal sounds like this or when i played some black black metal sounds like this 
or this, whatever. This sounds like this. And um, man, that just wasn't, that just wasn't for me. It wasn't for me. Um, and I mean, I, I'm friends with, with people that are still, you know, from those, from those days. I mean, and they're still like that. They're still like, this is true. This is false. This is, you know, death to false metal, all this kind of stuff. It's just, I don't know. Like that just, that just was never something I wanted to hang on my shield. Um, because music was my identity. Um, and I like too much other stuff. Like I like Beethoven. I like Miles Davis. I like to hear marching drum lines. I like, you know, djembe music. Um, I like blues. It was just sort of, I, I don't know, man, like that just, that just wasn't, wasn't my, my thing. That's not to say I don't have stuff I don't like. Cause maybe there, there's a Patreon thing. What is the band that I, that I absolutely cannot stand at all? There you go. That'll be my first Patreon thing. I'm going to rant about them and, and what I think they've done to a disservice to music. But, um, you know, that's the, the Cathernus thing was just kind of any and everything. And that, that, um, that evolved actually into, into the reticent once I stopped being a part of these other bands. Um, so yeah, it, it'd be, it'd be interesting to revisit some of that, some of that old stuff. And maybe that's something I could just do. Um, maybe that's part of the Patreon thing, like update some of the old stuff or just perform some of them or, uh, you know, something like that. Maybe, um, who knows more spent to your list. I mean, see like the teacher in me doesn't want to, doesn't want to do that because I'm just like, Oh no, I have to be, I have to be you know nice and supportive, but, you know, at the same time, like the perfectionist in me who also like resents people who don't treat music with the respect I think it deserves. Like you'll, you'll find that the bands I don't like, it's, it's not usually about the music because you'll find that I like another band that's the same genre and similar, but it's, it's the attitude. It's the, the what they use music for. That's, that's usually where you really lose me. Um, but you know i'd say that would be bad for my career but again like if i'm already obscure what do i have to lose really so maybe maybe um but anyway um yeah so i'm going to pursue that that uh, that thing i'm going to look into the the different items you guys suggested um and maybe like on our socials uh, we'll we'll put up like a um a poll of, Hey, what, uh, what stuff would you like to see? What content would you like to see? Oh my God, there's that word. Oh, Jesus Christ. I hate that word, but what stuff would you, would you want, uh, from that? And I don't know. I mean, hopefully people wouldn't get mad if I, if I wasn't posting like constantly, but, um, read creepy nice up stories. You know, I've had people ask me to read, stories before um but i can i guess i can do that do what we could do scary stories to tell in the dark or uh the 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 grinch who stole christmas for the holidays uh something like that um may i may oh wait no, i could do like stuff to help you sleep so i could just like read the phone book or some bullshit like that um so that you can just play the video and it's, it's me reading for an hour That'd be, uh, that's quality, quality content, as they say. Um, but yeah, those are all good ideas. Thank you so much for, for all that, all that feedback. Um, that's very helpful. I know you guys were asking stuff along the way, but is there anything I can answer for you? Um, since you answered so much for me, um, I was trying to do it as, as it went. I, I apologize. I don't know exactly how it looks to you, but it'll, the chat thing stays stationary and then it just jumps. And then I have to kind of scroll. So if I miss anything, I, I apologize. It is uh, not intentional. Again, I'm, I know about music. That's, that's the only stuff I, I have. But is there anything, um, anything you want to know? Anything, uh, you know, you know, you, you would like me to, to talk about? Um, uh, you know, I, I, 
again, just want to to make sure you get your 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 time's worth being here. Um, recap the tour plan, plans, please, Mr. Few first minutes. I heard next year. Okay, so this will, if I remember correctly, this you can review this. Um, I went through kind of some of the bad stuff that had been going on with me, um, especially medically. Um, so we needed to push things. So I had to cancel the tour for, for this year and we're going to reschedule for next year in, we're looking at end of, end of March and April. So like last week of March, first week of April, that right there, that kind of like spring break time. Right. Um, that's not coincidental. <laughs> um, and, um, our plan right now, nothing is set in stone, so anything could change. Our plan right now was to go south, try to maybe even like wing out to Texas and then come back and then go north in the summer, um, which obviously gets hotter then, so north would be at least a little more tolerable. Um, I've been to Florida in, you know, like June or May, and dear God, man, that is that is some humidity. And I taught in South Carolina for four years. Um, and I mean, in like 110 degrees, but good God, that was, that was rough. So, um, so that's the tour plan. We'll do, um, we're going to do two weeks in the spring and then we're going to do stuff in the summer. Um, and um, we'll, we'll do that way in advance. And hopefully by then the albums are ready. Um, the, the other advantage here is like by then we should have like, a video we should have a single out we should have maybe even like figured out like how how to release stuff would be great to kind of tie it all together um but we will be playing new material it'll be a completely new live show i'll do a complete new video for us um or the the video content you see when we play um mostly be like you might hear one song we did last year on the road um but everything else will be related to the new the new show where the last one was about Alzheimer's. This one's going to be focused around grief. Um, so that'll be, that'll be that. Um, will that song from the tour be a single? Uh, yeah. Here's the funny thing. We, James and I listened to please about a week or two ago. Um, in it's unfinished state before I had, it's actually before I had done the, the harsh vocals and, um, we were listening to a song called The Concealment, one called The Night River, one called The Scorn, um, The Bed of Wasps, The Riptide, The Chance. And with at least three of them, like everything kind of kind of was like, oh, that could be a single. Oh, that could be a single. Oh, that could be a single. And it was just like, well, there's only like six full songs on the album and then these two interludes. And that's still, you know, 45 something minutes. Um it's me. I really tried to be as economical as possible, but you know, I have a lot to say, but yes, the song, if you saw us last year, the song we played during our set that would have been unfamiliar is called the concealment. Um, those who don't wish to wake. And, uh, that song will be on there. That song is from please. It's actually the first song off of please. Um, that's very likely to be the single because we started to, we started to use that as an opener. I think we opened prog power with it. We definitely used it when we were playing with cynic and atheist. Um, but it was, it was an, uh, we just kind of liked it as just an opener. It was just a good grabber. Um, and, uh, so, you know, I think, I think just because that one has a nice energy, it's got a familiar melody and it's got a cool kind of sing along moment with the, we are lonely thing. Um, you know, I think that would be a good one to just kind of maybe try to put out and get in people's ears. Cause I'd love for people to sing that with us. Um, it was crazy to me when we played last year, you know, both on the tour and at Prague power, like seeing people sing along, seeing that people knew the words to some of the songs that that was insane to me. Um, there were people, I signed copies of uh, La Tom de Trutu at our little autograph table. There were people that had that. That thing's been out of print a while. The third record, that's been out of print a while. That's the one with Losing My Religion on it. That's been sold out forever. Um, and like people had that one guy who was like from 
oh my god where was he from he was like brazil or chile it was south america i can't remember oh my god i can't i know it was south america but i can't remember which country oh no but um he had like every record he wanted me to sign all of them this guy had apparently been listening to me like from the beginning it was crazy um so that was really that was a really cool thing and you know there's another thing to auction off i found a sealed copy of la tom just randomly in, in moving some of the merch i found one copy that was not sold i guess it got like filed with something else so i have i have one single copy of that left and i was like maybe i could like sign that or do something with it because that's now like the the last one um you know i don't know maybe maybe uh maybe that'd be cool maybe people would dig that i don't know um we'll see uh let me see any chance to come to canada man if if someone can i've i have applied for us to play festivals in canada multiple times uh we never get it um I forgot to do it after we played Prog Power because uh, you know what uh, that probably would help <laughs> now. But uh, we've we've applied to play some festivals. Um, we don't get picked, and we're not we're not like a huge deal, and we're not local to Canada. So I don't know that anybody's you know gearing up for us. But that was that was kind of the goal was to try to get on a festival up there and then try to make like a route out of it um because i know we have we you know we have some fans in canada and love to go there um i hate hot weather so i see how cold it is up there sometimes and i think man if only um <laughs> but i would uh, i would love to go i would love to go and when we definitely we definitely want to um it is on the it is on the to-do list um if you happen to have any sway with, with somebody or a, a band promoter or anything to, to say, Hey, you should, you should book these guys. Um, we will, we will do it. Like if we, if we can get a show going up there, uh, we will, we will do it. Absolutely. Um, any other themes or topics you'd really like to explore in future albums? So, um, believe it or not, even though I'm trying to finish up these other two albums, I'm already three songs into the next album. That will be after that um and that we're james and i are just referring to it as the divorce album um and there's a lot of complex emotions and a lot of stuff that i kind of concealed for a lot of years i got a, a lot of anger and bitterness uh, about some things and some hurts so this will be it'll be a different record it will it, it'll be an angrier side of me than perhaps some of the other ones um not the whole way through um, I, I'm kind of structuring that album as like seasons. So spring to summer to fall to winter. Um, and that's, that's charting the, the decline of the, the relationship. Um, so there's all sorts of little subtle things in there. Um, some fun time signatures I haven't used before, which, which I, I like. And, um, it's, uh, you know, we'll see, we'll see where that one goes. We'll see where that one goes. Um, if you're if you're friends with me on Facebook, you may have actually heard one of the songs ish um, because I was writing it several years ago and actually posted the a version of it. Um, so, yeah, I've got the divorce album and I have another idea outside of that kind of stuff. Um, I don't want to get into just yet, but I think when when thinking about this project you know what what makes it hopefully expressive is that these are all you know personal things that i you know like i, I said it like years ago in an interview that they were like diary entries um and i think that's part of what allows the music to be you know maybe relatable or at least as evocative and emotional as it is because it's it's very revealing i'm very vulnerable playing it and writing it um so with that with that said um you know I, i'm going to kind of keep on that that frame but i am going to take some time off like even if i finish the divorce album like in december it's going to be a couple years before i want to do 
another thing because this these two records have have taken a lot out of me um that's something else i was telling the guys about and they they were they agreed james in particular had said he really agreed that i need i need a break um because i've been kind of running in overdrive for a while just emotionally and um i've made it like this real important mission of mine to finish these albums and I've put all this pressure on me, but like, we don't have a label waiting. We don't have any deadline we're trying to meet. You know, I could do it when I'm healthy. I could do it when I'm well or whatever, but like, I'm, I've just been obsessed. And I think that leads to very uh, emotional music that you'll hear. Um, but I pay a price for that. Um, so the divorce album is in the shoot. It's, it's, it's already begun work. Um, so that that'll be kind of an interesting thing um it'll actually be kind of a, a full circle thing because the first studio album i ever did as the reticent was a more more to me which is which is latin for love will be the death of me that was about all all those songs are about relationships that i had and um so kind of coming around full circle Maybe the divorce album will be the last one. And that way, like the, the, the reticent makes, you know, kind of returns back where it came from. Um, <laughs> you know, who knows? Uh, I didn't think there'd be another one after the one for my father. Um, and I started just writing again to deal with um, a lot of stuff I had been hiding, holding onto and running from for a couple years. And uh, so It'll be interesting. I know Jay Jamie said he's more excited to hear that one than even the new ones uh, because he's never he's never heard an angry album from me. He said he, he was like, an angry reticent album would be a really interesting concept. Uh, and so he's just, he's very curious to hear what that would sound like. Um, which I was almost a little disappointed. He was so excited about the, the album I haven't even started recording yet or finished writing he's more excited about that than he is the the new stuff <laughs> so um but yeah so there there that is uh let's see um thank you guys so much uh i appreciate that tour posters be so just thought about it. tour posters first so it would be awesome for the forget me not tour as well uh the forget the forget me not tour posters are actually still up um for sale if you if you wanted one of those posters i still have i think we have seven left from the original however many hundred we had um i think there's seven of those posters left um and i mean to write it on there but like if you if you wanted something like if you wanted a poster from us and you wanted me to like sign it or write something on it you can you can just tell me and i'd be glad to do it um johanna and i actually still have your tour poster because i i know your name because it's on that poster and uh i still have it uh i meant to mail it to you forever ago because you did send us our your address to our to our instagram but the uh, uh we got locked out of that instagram so i cannot get that i cannot get that uh <laughs> cannot get that address so you'd have to send it to our to our newer one or you could just wait till the next tour and i'll just hang on to it and we'll bring it we'll bring it around to you uh if you can wait wait a year um but yeah so i feel so bad a lot of a lot of folks are, are like saying all right i gotta go and then i by the time i get to it i know they're long gone but i feel bad um but yeah then after the divorce album you could put out some studio versions of hymns really full circle yeah yeah i, I mean I, I could um Hello from the U.S. to Bahrain. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you. Um, yeah. I'm glad you loved uh, Concealment, uh, uh, by the way. I um, appreciate that. So, yeah. Um, I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot in the shoot. There's a lot of stuff I'm going to try to do for us. Um, you know, unfortunately, I just got kind of hit with with really terrible luck, I guess, and some maladies and, uh, you know, mental stuff and all, all sorts of things. And so I'm, you know, just trying to claw my way back out. Um, 
but that's why we have music that's the great utility of music is that you know it can it can be a savior for us it's a a refuge it's a means of expression it's a means of connection um and uh you know, that's, it's something that I realized like when I was at, at some of my saddest about what had happened to my hand, what happened to my, to my larynx and all that, um, you know, working with my kids, you know, that's, that's the great thing about learning how to make music in some way you, it cannot be completely taken from you. You can never fully lose music because if I can't, you know, play the guitar anymore, well, maybe I can sing. If I can't sing anymore, well, I can, um, Maybe I can play the piano. If I can't play the piano, I can program stuff into uh, a DAW. If I, um, you know, have trouble doing that, I could use samples. I can still listen to it. I could still talk about it. I could still write about it. I could still compose it and, you know, give it to an ensemble, give it to somebody else, and they could play it. Um, and even if I didn't have those abilities, if I'm actively listening, the music will always take me somewhere um, if I let it. And that's, that's the beauty of this, you know? Um, so, you know, that was the lesson I took from going down that dark path for me and thinking like, you know, my life's never going to be the same and maybe it won't. I don't have any guarantee that my life is going to be the same as it was before, but maybe, um, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe I can still, do something positive, you know, and, uh, cause that's what we're, that's what we're about. So we're here for, but, um, I don't mean to get on a rant about that stuff, but I'll, I'll save that for Patreon. I'll, I'll, I'll give you my, you know, 55 minute dissertation on why music matters. Um, <laughs> if you want, um, but if anybody has any other, any other questions, anything I can answer for you or just, I don't know, <laughs> something you just want my opinion on. Um, you know, be happy to, to answer a couple more merch ideas, tote bags. We do have tote bags. We got them before Prague power. And that was before I found out that Prague power gives them bags. I thought we were so freaking smart. I was so proud of myself. Cause I was like, we got these, these, the little, um, I can't remember what they're called. The, like the, the string bags, like the ones you can kind of put behind you. Cause I remember teaching kids and kids used to always have them and like them or whatever. And they're cheap and and all that kind of stuff. And we put a put the logo on it. Look, logo logo looked really good. And um, you know, when we got to Prog Power, and they were like, "Oh well, we can certainly we can certainly sell them if you want." And I was I was thinking, well, now people can come by there and they they'll need a bag for all the merch from all the bands, and they'll just get one of ours. That'd be great. What a great idea. Yeah, no, we sold the least amount of that. <laughs> we sold out like Oubliette sold out. Um, we sold most of the CDs that we bought because uh, there's still still a few copies of On the Eve of Goodbye left. Um, and we sold a bunch of shirts and stuff like that. Um, but I think the bags sold the least. Um, but we do have them, and they're, they're going to be part of the flash sale, uh, just FYI. Um, we do have keychains, too. We have little light keychains. Um, uh, phone cases... That's something James brought up because we played with a band from Denver that had phone cases. He thought that was a neat idea. We looked into it. Um, I, I don't know if it's cost effective, but there it is. Buttons we had made for us once. I had a friend. Um, she had made us a bunch of buttons. Um, I wouldn't be opposed to doing it again, um, but I'd need to like get, you know, figure out where to go to get them, all that kind of stuff. I don't know what you mean by bottles. Um, like a like the thing you take to the gym, like that kind of thing, I guess. I guess my first thought was like a wine bottle or something. I was like, mm. but uh, yeah, you hear a lot of Opeth influence in your music. You know, that's the funny thing. Actually, if you, if you, I think you just ar arrived there. Um, my friend from Bahrain. Um, I actually was talking about at the beginning, uh, neurosis and Steve on till was a bigger influence on me than, than Opeth. And, but what was weird is me trying to sound like Steve Von Till kind of creates Opeth. <laughs> um, just because like, I, I can't sing like him. I, I don't play like him and I'm a little kind of jittery and, and like to do the next thing. So I'm not as patient. So it just kind of ends up with that stuff. And I do, I do like Opeth. Don't get me wrong. Um, my favorite Opeth 
album is is Blackwater Park, like for sure. Um, that's that's just a masterpiece. Um, it's beautiful. It's wonderfully arranged. I love the way it's mixed. Um, even it, even if it's not like perfectly clear, it's it's just it's just a fabulous fabulous record. Um, and there's wonderful songs on there. And we, we you know, we, the, the cover we did, we did it at, at Prague Power and stuff like that. We, you know, we've done it on the stage several times. Prague Power is actually the last time we're ever going to play it. So if you never saw us play it, I apologize. But we would do Drapery Falls, um, which is just a gorgeous song. Gorgeous song. Um, my favorite song of theirs is Isolation Years. Um, that's... Uh, it's it's it, you know if i were in the band that's the kind of thing i would want to write um and i think i think their best written album like as far as like the mix and everything like if i was more objective and not subjective i think their best thing they ever did is ghost reveries um but me personally i think blackwater park just speaks to me more um you know there's there's all this energy and some cleanliness on on ghost reveries that you know, was really cool and, and makes it fun to listen to. It's fun to play, but you know, the sadness, the feeling that's in Blackwater Park, like there's, there's a, there's a rawness that, that I connected with that. I, I hope people hear in my music is that like, man, this, this is, this one, this person's saying something, they're going through something. Um, you know, Ghost Reveries didn't have quite as many of those moments. They did have them, but not not quite as many. Uh, so that's why for me, um, that's where it is. Music is absolutely an amazing thing, that's for sure. Even though I don't play it, it certainly helps you get through life. I'm so glad to hear that, man. Um, it's 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 definitely um, the utility of music. That's what's so great about it is that some people use it as a mood stabilizer. I listen to music and it makes me feel better. Some people use music to... Um, so to change their mood, some people use music as a means of identification, as a means of purging themselves of, emo of an emotion. I feel sad. I want to hear sad me. That's, that's what I am. I want to hear something that sort of matches what I feel so that I feel like something's draining the venom from the wound, you know? Um, and there are still yet other, other, you know, uses for it, but that's something, you know, if you get into the academia of this stuff, we call it the utility of music and it's, um, that's what's great about it is that not everybody's going to use it the same way. Um, I think that's why, like, I'll be, I'll be honest. I'm too scared to ever go to Reddit and like search for us. Um, I, I know that if I go on, it's going to be a bunch this sucks. And these guys are terrible. I'm, I'm sure that we just get roasted. Um, and I'm just, I don't want to, I don't want to hear it or see it. <laughs> you know, like I just, I just don't. Um, I'm not, I never said we were, we were good. I, I'm not going to try to argue with them. Um, but what's kind of great about it is that somebody could, could listen to what I do and say, well, this is stupid or this is too emotional or too this or too that or whatever. And someone else will hear it and say, no, this is speaking directly to me. They're speaking like as if they knew my experience. That's the great thing about the utility of music, because for that other person, maybe they don't use music the way I do. So they won't connect with it. Um, we had a guy fill in for bass with us once um, who's in a uh, he's in a more successful band than this. Um, <laughs> that will will remain nameless. Um, fabulous bass player. Really wanted him to be in the reticent. But he does not process emotions the way I do. Um, and he like when he gets upset or anything like that he doesn't want to listen to music he listens to music for enjoyment and intellectual stimulation all that stuff but if he's feeling angry or sad or something he doesn't want to listen to music and so he said like he he liked the music but he said you know the the things that he saw like me crying on stage the crowd crying he said like that's i'm just completely disconnected from that i just i don't understand that at all um and he he doesn't he doesn't connect um, you know, to, uh, to, to music emotionally that, that way. And I don't think like, even if he, if he wanted to, like he, he would feel probably like an odd man out in this band if, if he had, um, continued with us, but that's, that's the great thing for him. 
he's going to go home and listen to, you know, King Crimson or, you know, uh, Toto or something like that. They'd just be like, man, this is great. And it makes him feel good. And that is great feeling music. It really is. Um, I'm someone who worships at the altar of music. So I, I use multiple utilities of music. Uh, but some people only use one. And that's okay. That's completely fine. You know? Uh, let's see. How do I feel about sleep token? Um, honestly, I, I don't feel really one way or the other about them. I know they're the hot thing and everyone likes them. They're fine. It, it didn't like grab me the way it grabbed everybody else. Um, some people have even compared us to them. Maybe I haven't heard enough and I've been so deep into like my own stuff. I'd really honestly have not been like seeking out new music. Um, especially in some of my darker times, I've been, I've been kind of going to comfort stuff, things I know and everything is, as you guys may know, like you go through a dark time, you want, you want those songs that are kind of like a warm blanket for you. Um, even if they're like hateful black metal. Um, so I don't, um, I respect them. I mean, I've seen, I've seen videos and play and sing and, and all very talented. Um, I dig the, the, the vibe and the, the hidden faces and everything. Um, it's, it's very cool. Uh, so I don't have anything against them. Um, it's, it just, uh, I don't know. Uh, that's kind of what it is. I, I haven't heard like a ton of their stuff. So, um, but like I said, uh, I'm very aware of them, uh, you know, so, but, uh, yeah. Uh, let me see. Uh, I've told this to, People as far as vocal vocals go, Vessel is phenomenal, one of the best. Yet still, Chris, <laughs> shit. Uh, I think you think too much of my voice, um, uh, for sure. Most of your reticence mentions might be me suggesting you guys. Well, thank you. I appreciate you. Um, that's very nice of you. The reddest Reddit scent. Uh, well, is after the divorce self and focused on my disdain for Reddit. Man, I'm kind of down for that. Um, that actually takes the cake. I liked my my fair reticent idea that we had for for April Fools, mainly because I got to show off my animals. But <laughs> I like I like that the the Reddit scent. Um, boy, yeah, I could I can get down with that. Maybe there. Hey, wait, no, there's your Patreon thing. Uh, special songs about how I hate <laughs> certain aspects of social media or internet things. Um, <laughs> that'll, and that's what that'll be. Uh, let's see. Hateful black metal weighted blanket. Well, yeah, I mean, it is, you know, if you, I grew up, I mean, I'm, old, I'm probably older than most of you, but I grew up in, you know, as a teenager, like in the nineties, when, when all that stuff in Norway was popping off. And I remember that God awful terror terrorizer article, the you know, most dangerous music in the world with that famous picture of our eagerness with the, with the fucking blades and everything. And then all the shit about the murders and church burnings and all that stuff. And, um, so I was, I was, you know, curious about it, but I, I didn't get into it until a few years later. Um, but I mean, there's something about like those, those first five dark throne albums. There's just something about them, you know, that's, I don't know that it just strangely kind of comforting or kind of puts you somewhere or like the, the, or, or Panzerfaust, like quintessence, you know, that doomy thing. There's just something about it. That's, you know, sort of comforting in a weird way. Um, and there's, I mean, there's strength to be gained from it as well. So, um, I don't know. I've actually, I mean, in recent months, I've been going down these, these, uh, rabbit holes of music I used to listen to years ago, um, that I have, you know, memories with. So like old symphonic pieces, things I've conducted, um, old blues tunes, old jazz tunes. Um, so yeah. Do I know... Garia, Garia, am I saying that right? Uh, I do not. Um, I can look them up. Uh, and thank you for my, yes, I agree. Fereticent is fantastic. Um, 
we've had we've had ferret representatives for a couple of years now. Um, so yeah. Uh, God, I was gonna say something else. I can't remember what it was. Don't know. So uh, before I before I kind of go to my last thing, is anything else I can answer for you? Anything else you're curious about? Going once, going twice. I've been going for a while here. So if, if y'all have hung in here this whole time, like if you're still conscious, um, hats off to you. And thank you for putting up with me this long. That's uh, you all, you all deserve some sort of uh, hazard pay for having to hear me talk for this long. Um, so we're going to, um, we're going to have some preview stuff for the new albums. My, the manager person wants us to try to do like a TikTok or something like that. I do not have one of those accounts. I'm not interested in TikTok, but uh, you know, Oh, that's, that's where sleep token broke, you know, broke out in this band and you should be on there. And, um, I don't want to be, <laughs> but we're going to put some clips up. Um, we do have some like shots of some of the stuff I've been recording. So you will get a chance to hear some of the new stuff, like clips from the Night River, Bed of Wasps, stuff like that. Um, some behind the scenes play through things, um, like some maybe just some short clips just to kind of whet your appetite, kind of let you know that we're, we're, we're working here and that uh, I'm, I'm almost done uh, with everything. And... Um, you know, we'll, the mixing will begin in June and we'll see how long it takes. Hopefully it will be, you know, smooth sailing. Um, but more than likely it'll be a lot of back and forth as we try to get it just right. Um, it was about two or three months for Oubliette. So I, I imagine it'll be something like that. And, you know, while we're doing that, I know Jamie may send it out to some people he knows, um, connections he has, um, you know, maybe some people will be interested because of the fact that we've we've played some larger things. Um, you know, James's band is blowing up. Um, they're blowing right past us. Like it's not even funny. Um, but they're a little more palatable. Like they they don't have <laughs> songs that are as hugely depressing <laughs> as, as as my bullshit. So um makes sense. Makes sense. Um that they're that they're leaving us in the dust. But as they're blown up you know they're you know our association and we're all friends i mean god man you know obviously james is in the band he's one of my closest friends but you know i love phil and i love paul um as well um and, and talk to them pretty regularly um they've also come up here to watch horror movies maybe the, there's a patreon thing you do a reticent and no spoon review review some sort of <laughs> some sort of horror movie thing um I'm, dig I'm digging this the more I think about it. Uh, but uh, hopefully that will, you know, maybe get us, get us some, um, some traction somehow. And I mean, I'm not under any illusion that we're going to blow up uh, or sell millions of records or, you know, tour the world with, I don't know who's big now, sleep token or ghost or something like that. Like I have no, no, um, no illusions for that. So, um, I just want us to reach as many people as possible and help as many people as possible because everybody's going to face loss and I want them to have, you know, if they're into this kind of stuff, I want them to have something. Um, so I'm just hoping we can help some people. That's, that's what I want. And if we can help more people, I'm, I'm into that. That's what, that's what I'm here for. So, um, yeah, anyway, um, I cannot thank you all enough for, for, uh, spending your time with me, um, and speaking with me and, and everything. Um, very, very grateful. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to, like I said, we got a flash sale coming, look out for that. And, um, I'm going to look into this Patreon thing, um, for, for, you know, for real. And, uh, so look, watch our social media for maybe some, some suggestions about stuff, but we'll, we'll see, maybe we can try to start small, um, and see where it goes. And Hey, hey you know, if it helped out like the Ablissus Karis or any of these other bands, I mean, it's, maybe it can help us. Um, couldn't hurt. Right. So, uh, anyway, 
Um, but yeah, so we'll uh, we'll get we'll get all that stuff uh, rolling. And like I said, um, I'm gonna keep seeing the doctors and try to get all this stuff taken care of. I'm on I'm on the upswing as it seems right now. Um, so it sucks to cancel plans for this year, but um, we will. Um, we, you know, we'll definitely be back out, uh, next year. Um, I think I'm just, I'm just kind of burnt and, you know, just need to need to recover. So, um, you'll get some sneak peeks of some of the stuff, uh, very soon. Um, after it goes to Jamie to, to start mixing, I'll put up some clips of just the recording process. Um, I may even put some stuff here on YouTube as well. Um, so, Oh yeah, if you, if you, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Whatever isn't that what you're supposed to say? I'm so fucking bad at this <laughs> YouTube stuff. I should not be. I, I can't. I can't be responsible for our for our content. I'm just. I'm not good at this. Um, but yeah. Um, this was also told us something you could do on your Patreon too. Well, I appreciate that. Um, I, I mean, maybe I will. Maybe we just hang out and talk about stuff. Um, just had a thought by buddy Jared Smith and he, uh, Hellocentric is really good with marketing. There's in Raleigh. Maybe that would be a good connection. Hey, I mean, we need all the help we can get. So, yeah, I'm down. Uh, I'm really late I'm watching back from the beginning. But if I would love if the Eve shirts got reprinted. On the Eve, it's one of all time um, I would I'd be down to do uh, some Eve stuff more than likely we may we may kind of wait until the 2026 i know it seems like it's a long way away but that'll be the 10 year anniversary so we'll do we'll try to do something special for that um i'd like to do like a double disc re-release of it with like the album and then a second disc of like commentary on it um and maybe we could make it like a big thing you know we'll have a t-shirt thing or like a poster thing kind of like a bundle or something like that and you know, just something small, like limited to like a hundred copies or 200 copies or something like that. Just, um, so, um, that's something I'd like to do. Something I would like to do. Um, we just have to hope that the original files of the artwork are still workable. Cause, uh, one of my computers was tanked, um, in the recent years and I'm not sure if the Eve art was on there. So if it wasn't, we, we may have to be creative, um, with, with that, but, uh, yeah. So anyway, um, man, just thank, thank you all so much. Um, I really mean it. Um, apologies if I, if I was excessively loquacious, um, with this one nearly going two hours, I hope, I hope this is, uh, entertaining or, or informative or, something uh i'm just my my worries with doing these things i'm trying to get, be better about doing stuff like this is i'm always worried a no one's going to show up and b i'm going to bore everybody to tears so um thank you so much for engaging with me and talking with me and um you know i'm going to try to knock out some vocals here right now and um we'll see how that goes and Hopefully, uh, pretty soon you'll see an announcement from me saying the, the please and don't go have officially completed tracking and next is mixing. So at least the Eve demos on the second disc, like the demo of the girl broken so much. Dude, I have to find the computer with the Eve demos is, is the thing that got tanked. Um, yeah, girl broken sounded different. Some of those, some of those songs sounded very different. Um, they were not, ooh, some of those performances pretty rough, but, uh, yeah, uh, maybe, maybe, um, you know, for the Oubliette thing, actually, James suggested doing one of the early mixes. We have an early mix of Oubliette that sounds very different than the one that was released. And he was like, we should do that. We'll do an alternate mix or something like that. Um, or like the raw unmastered thing. Um, I don't know. I don't know what people would be into. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, so thank you guys so much. Um, I love you from the bottom of my heart and, um, I hope that, uh, days are treating you well. I hope you guys are finding victories where you can. I hope you are, um, 
able to make it through your storms. Um, and uh, I'm really, I'm really glad you're alive. I'm really glad you're here. I'm really glad that uh, that you're still that you're still with us. So, um, you know, and that you would choose to spend your time with me. That's uh, that's huge. That's huge to me. So, um, just thank you very sincerely. I'm gonna log off here, I guess, um, and uh, you'll hear from me soon. And I guess I'll see you guys next time. So be well, take care, take care of others.